Hello, welcome to another weekly update. Um, plenty of interesting things happening again this week. Um, so let's get into it. So the first um, is an update from the Microsoft Graph team and it's talking about what's new um, around change notifications and change tracking. So also called webhooks. Now, this is something that's come to Graph relatively recently, um, but actually it feels like there's real momentum behind this. Uh, and this is interesting. And the reason I'm kind of starting with this I wanted to allow a little time just to kind of talk it through. I'm going to link to the, the blog post um, by Vincent Bire uh, on the Graph team um, from Microsoft. And it's a good blog and it goes through all the things that are new and interesting. There's a bigger point to this, though, I think, which is interesting, which is that really change notifications have really come quite quickly since they've started. And what I mean by that is it feels like they're really becoming... Uh, the default way that you should find out about how stuff has changed in Graph. So if you're writing applications today that are polling, I would say you really should be looking at change notifications and see if the things that you're looking for in Graph are well serviced by change notifications. And not all of them are. What's really interesting, though, is that month by month, new capabilities are being added to change notifications. So it does really feel like the team are trying to um, cover off uh, the getting of data in that way and the getting of change data by by using change notifications so specifically like this month things that are new um so applications and all contacts go f into v1 and they're like fully ga now administrative use uh units um are um are, and also permission grants actually are in beta so that's really interesting so um that's quite good. If you want to look at how permissions things are changing um, over time, you can do that in Graph. That's quite interesting, um, as well as admin units. There's also another really interesting new thing, which is there's a new permission set for applications um, that can uh, look and see what other applications have subscriptions. So right now, if you create a subscription, you can only see that subscription. You can only see subscriptions you've already created as an application. Um, this grant permission um, will enable you to write applications that have almost like an admin role in being able to look across your tenants, see all the places that have subscriptions. So that is really interesting. Um, and that's that's good for these kind of admin type applications uh, as well. So it does really feel like a lot of um, effort and emphasis is being put into change notifications at the moment. And so I really think they are well worth investigating as a um, as a way of tracking changes to graph data over time. If you're interested, I did a blog post back in January about how to use um, these new change notifications. They were then kind of just called webhooks. Um, so the blog post just talks about them as webhooks um, for doing that and specifically for getting uh, channel and chat messages in Microsoft Teams. That's just one way of doing it. Uh, sorry, that's just one type of information that you can get out of um, the change notification sort of process in in graph there's loads of other and, and that's what i'm really talking about now more and more capabilities are coming online which is really interesting so that's why i wanted to call that blog post out because i think it's really interesting i think it will look back and say oh yeah like this is how microsoft um changed how we use graph and really pushed people into using change notifications to track changes over time rather than continual polling which totally makes sense because continual polling um, must be a huge resource on, on graph, uh, on the infrastructure, uh, and just must, it's not optimal. Everybody knows it's not optimal, but up until now, there wasn't a better way of doing it. It's great now that there is a better way of doing it, so we should all move over to that. It'll be interesting to see whether Microsoft forces that with sticks rather than carrots. You know, what, what I mean by that is change notification is like the carrot. It, it's If you implement change notifications, it's easier to use that you'll probably get the data faster. It's a nicer experience, but you could still poll if you want to. We might see Microsoft bringing out the sticks and saying, actually, you can't poll like that. That's not on. We've written change notifications for you. It's better. We'd rather you did that. It's better for the load of the system and everything. We'd rather you do that. We're going to start kind of beating you up a little bit if you're polling. I don't, don't know if that's going to happen. It'll be interesting to watch and see. Um, one of the challenges Microsoft have in balancing, you know, how they um, how they manage the system and how they manage how users use the system. Okay, um, what's next? Oh, so there's a really good um, Microsoft Graph community call um, this week. 
uh, and some really interesting stuff got covered in it. Some of that I've covered before. Um, so some publisher attestation and certification stuff I've covered quite exhaustively around Teams. Um, it looks like that's rolling out to the rest of Microsoft 365 apps now, which is great to see. Um, um, but yeah, you can go back and look at my blog posts on, on doing that because um, I've been through that process. I kind of know what it's like and I wrote a big kind of write up about what it's all like, the problem it's trying to solve and, and how you go through it. What's new, I think, and interesting is something called publisher verification. Um, so that's for when you've written um, Azure AD apps that are multi-tenanted. So you write the app and then uh, it goes out to another uh, customer, you go to one of your customers or partners or whatever, and they just see the pop up for approving it, but they're not actually putting the app, they're not creating a new app, it's your app, it's multi tenanted, they're just approving it for using their tenant. There's an additional step in that process now where you can verify yourself as a publisher um, by providing your MPN number, and if you do that, you get a little kind of blue tick next to your name, it's like a mark of recognition, it just kind of helps give a bit of confidence. Um, to people installing apps that this app is legit, it's kind of come from somewhere that Microsoft give a blue tick next to. Maybe we'll see a bit more, uh, again, sticks and carrots. We might see a bit more coming in there around warnings or maybe a tenant level setting to only be able to kind of install third party from verified publishers. Right now, I think it's just about getting the groundwork done, getting that kind of um, core body of, of apps and publishers verified um, before they kind of take any further steps. So there's a private preview you can sign up to for that. Um, if you're interested, the link is in the blog post and I'm gonna put the blog post link um, in the description of this video. Also happening this week, um, another episode of the All About 365 show um, with um, Jason and Steve. And this is a good one because uh, it's talking to Chris O'Brien, so fellow MVP Chris O'Brien. Uh, he is a 12-time MVP, which is pretty impressive, um, and he is talking all about Power Apps. Um, so I thought that would be very interesting for, for you folk, so I thought I'd put that in here. Um, yeah, I think, I think it'd be interesting. It's, 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 I haven't, it, I, it's on my list of things to listen to this weekend, so I haven't listened to it, but I know the All About 365 show. I know them well enough to, to put a link to it in here to know that it's going to be good, and I'm about to go and listen to it. So, um, And also, Chris O'Brien um, will have lots of very good things to say. He's been through multiple complicated SharePoint development projects. He's been kind of using Power Platform since it started, um, and he's uh, kind of... Yeah, he's done lots of things with Power Apps, so he'll have some really interesting things to say. So very excited for that. That should be really, really good. Finally, before I go, um, I'm going to leave you with a little fun video I did in the week. Um, lots of us are missing in-person conferences. It looks like there aren't going to be any kind of for quite a long time. Certainly no Microsoft ones until July next year. And um, so I thought I'd like try and put together a little conference at home. Uh, so you can see how successful that was. Um, it's on YouTube. I'll put a link to the video below. All right, that's everything from me. Um, whatever it is you're doing, I hope you're staying safe and well and uh, have a great weekend and I will talk to you again next time.